Hello and welcome back to Fusion 289. This is going to be the second part of exploring how stuff is imported and how it works and how all that goes with Unreal. Uh, just giving a quick plug real quick. Again, I'm going to put the link at the bottom for my GoFundMe. If you like the videos and wish to do so, you can always donate to help me get a better setup. So let's go back to the dashboard. And again, there it is right there. Appreciate that very much if you guys do. Again, if not, no big deal. Anywho, getting back into it, this is the uh, little piece that we kind of left off with on the last set of little videos. If you still have it, good. If not, not a big deal. You can always make something of any type you want. If you just absolutely have to have the same one, this is a 4x4. Four four. You can see I did it by the dimensions or the scale. Just take the basic cube, the one that you load up or start with when you first open it up. Make it this size, and then the axis, all of those are going to be as follows. Let's see here, I'm just making a quick correction here. The first one over here is going to be a negative 1 by positive 2 and 2. That's negative 1 on the X, positive 2 on the Y, and 2 on the Z. I'm going to put some uh, annotations in there too on this video that should be popping up right now for you guys to see. Uh, the next cube, this is the 4x4x4, four by four by four, or 2x2x2, two by two by two, depending on whether you went with dimension or scale, uh, located at a 2x2x2 two by two by two even. That is to say, all three points are 2x2x2. Two by two by two. The last one is going to be a 5 on the X, a 2x2 two by two as well. There we go. So yeah, there you go. All of them are on the 2x2 two two on the X and, X and Z, or sorry, Y and Z. The only difference is, is they're all spaced just a little bit differently. Okay, getting back to it, uh, what we're going to cover again is how to export and import. Uh, I always go down here and hit the export button and click FBX. That's the one I've always used. You can do it with the uh, 3D Studio. There are other ones here that also will work. I just always stuck with FBX. It's where I learned and how I started on it. This is what works, and you know what they say. If it works and it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, by default, you should look something like this. Let's see here, I'm going to set this all back. This is what you should be looking at. It should look pretty close to this. These are the options that all should be checked. Negative Z forward, Y up should be on binary 7.4. There's an issue with which way these point. If I export it right now, it's going to be flipped in a weird, odd direction. It's not quite oriented the way I want. So I always just go back to the ASCII 6.1. Uh, when you click it, you're going to load this up, and again, this will be your default, everything selected and all that. Uh, negative Z forward is correct, and the Y up is also correct. Your scale is going to be at 1. Uh, all these are going to be checked here. Leave them checked by default. Go ahead, and the only other one you need to check is tangent spaces. That's for all files. They're all going to be that way. Same thing on the negative Z and the Y up. Those are all going to be that way in the 6.1. That's all default. That's all set up. Uh, the one thing that can be varied and changed is the scale. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to execute export this test cube as a 1.0. Go ahead and export that one if you're using the same one. If not, whatever it is you're using, just export it as a 1.0. Go over here. I'm just going to right click and re-import. And again, if you want, and you're going to get a couple error messages, click OK out of those. Don't worry about it. Uh, you can also click, click import, and you can find it there and import whatever name you have. And just bear in mind, it's going to drop it into whatever folder you happen to be on. So if you're up here on the main one, up under content, it's going to put it in there. Uh, try to make you a new folder. That's what I would recommend somewhere, and just put it, name it something like test mesh or something like that. Uh, I usually keep, as you can see, there's the main map I'm working out of. These are all the textures and meshes. There's a test mesh in here just so that I can put stuff in here because it's going to import you know, different random things. You might screw up and it might import two or three materials like this one, as you can see here, has more than one material. Yeah. I don't know why it's not updating. Oh, I know why it's not updating. Because this is what I have selected in a, in a world grid. <laughs> Just kidding. But as an example, come on, there we go. And there's that and all that. Anyway, 
getting back to it, let's click that little guy and focus in on him. You're going to notice something really weird going on with your piece. It gave you a weird error message. You're also going to notice how small that is. Uh, effectively, everything in Unreal is like one-tenth of a millimeter per one U unit, or one blender unit. It's one-tenth of an Unreal unit. It's, it's something to that effect. It's really small. Oh, I got a downsize. Uh, so if I zoom way in, even though this is a two unit, in this case a four unit piece, you'll notice how much space I have here. I'm going to duplicate that real quick, figure out where it dropped it at. I'm going to put it here, and then the Y, I'm just going to negative. The only reason I'm doing this is just to go ahead and show you. You don't have to do that. And you'll notice how it looks like I have about two units here. If I middle, let's see, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that's, notice that's 10 units across, so that's 8 total, so 2. So you'll notice how it's a, a tenth. So basic, basically, if I go in, I'm going to delete my extra one. If I go in, going on that math, if that's 10 and I only have 4, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to export this at a 10 unit number here, just to go ahead and go at that rate. The math should work out that it should now have this is a 2 by 2, this is a 4 by 4, and this is a 2 by 2, and we're back to a 1 to 1 scale. You don't always have to import under that that sizing. And if you'll notice, in fact, it does 1, 2, 3, and or 4 unit by 4 unit and 2 unit by 2 unit. You can do it by half sizes if you want. Uh, you can do it by whatever you need to make it work right. I try to import everything back into that map or whatever it is I'm working with at the correct scale, so this way you don't have to do any crazy numbers. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, matter of fact, if you really wanted to and you just didn't feel like re-importing something, you'll notice I'm on this top, this side of the Z. And this is just a quick trick. I'm going to do negative one now. It's flipped over, so that, that's a quick way you can fix that. The only only stink about it is, is like I said, you'll have to go on and do that for every one, or you'll have to make one that's this way, and then duplicate it. But that that essentially again is how all that's going to work, and you can do that, you know, for all of those. I'll get into that a little bit better in more detail later on. But that's that's the basic of how that works. Uh, there is an error message you're going to get. Um, we're going to do this. Go ahead and delete it out over here we're going to delete that we're going to delete it again we're going to re-import it by hitting the import button we're going to find the test tube cre trio you should have generate light maps checked don't leave it that way um, when you import you always want to uncheck that again we're going to make them all you're going to hit import it's going to say degenerate tangent we don't care click OK you're going to get no smoothing again we don't care doesn't really matter if we go to edit, right click it and go to edit, it's going to pop this menu up. The way you fix that error message is to come over here and click recompute normals. If you accidentally import it with generate light map UVs, that option is here as well. Your source light index should be a minimum of one. I always just pretty much run it with a one. I don't know why you really need more. And then I hit apply. And you'll notice that there was a change. I'm going to hit Control Z here. Generate UV lights. Yeah, that's not what I was wanting, but that works. Uh, you'll notice that everything kind of took on a lunch flatter face, and it looks a little bit different now than what it did. And you can turn off, if you want, the collision box so you don't have to see it. I usually leave it on just so that way it's a self reminder that, hey, you didn't fix the collision, you dumb dumb. Uh, you also can use a little trick, and we're just about winding this down. This is going to roll over into another video, so I'm going to stop real quick, and then I'm going to pick right back up uh, on our second video.